what's going on y'all that was club ghost one of the top hip-hop clubs in osaka definitely one of the top hip-hop clubs in japan that i've been to club ghost is open up almost every single night another hip-hop club that's a staple in osaka is club pure that's the first one i went to club pure goes down to uh, i think ghost is overtaking pure as the top club in osaka for hip-hop I'll leave a list of clubs in the bottom of the description box. Also, even if you don't listen to hip hop, I'll leave a list of a few other clubs I know about. EDM clubs, uh, top 40 type clubs, those type of places. Most of the time after the club, people in Japan tend to like to go out and grab some ramen or some type of food after they finish eating. Either some yakitori, that's grilled chicken, or uh, go get some ramen. Uh, we went down to Ramen Street which is right next to the Dotsonbori Bridge. There's a gang of ramen places, uh, so you got plenty to choose from. Most of them are all open super late, so they definitely gonna be open. The next day, I did a little bit of exploring. Uh, after I got in a little workout, I went and hit up Minami Samba. Uh, that's a area kind of close to Shinsaibashi. It's a lot of cool little boutique clothing stores, uh, some bike shops, some cool little restaurants. Just a nice little area to walk around. It's not as busy as Shinsaibashi. Uh, and it's also a little bit more upscale with like a little bit of an older crowd that's around there. Plus it's close to a lot of like businesses. Stumbled upon this dope little record shop. I can't lie, this isn't the first time I've been there. I actually been there once before and I went to one of this guy's events. The event was super dope. It was a little jazz event, live music, food, good food, good music. Met a bunch of cool people. Actually ran into uh, one of the musicians that I had met when I was in Tokyo. So it was a pretty cool event, and I would definitely recommend if you ever come to Osaka, go check out Especial Records, uh, the record shop, and double check to see if there's an event going on during the time that you stay. I'll leave that information in the description below as well. Records in the Minami Samba, mm. I, and uh, I'm doing DJ and produce called Kyoto Jazz Massif, and I'm running this shop and my label as well. Oh, okay. What's the label called? It's same. It's special records. Oh, okay. Label. And um, what what type of uh, music do you specialize in? It's like a jazz, soul, house, crossover, broken beat, that kind of style. Uh, what type of events do you have going on? Because I see you have an event right here that yeah. just passed. Where was this one? It is in, I have residency in, in the Tokyo once, uh -huh. around a month. And a couple of places in Osaka, I'm doing party. But sometimes it's like a, in a club event, all night. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's like a bar, restaurant party, for the more chilling lounge party I'm doing here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and what's the name of your uh, Facebook page so anybody can find you if they oh. if they come visit Osaka? Okay, Yoshihiro Okino is uh, my favorite uh, Facebook name, and you can find it. And uh, yeah, already I uploading like my party in uh, you know Facebook. You know, and to check it out. Do you play music yourself? Yeah, I'm DJ. Oh, okay. I'm producer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, man. Thanks for thanks for the information. Thanks, man. Such a short trip, but the next day woke up, got a great workout in in the morning, and decided to do a little bit of exploring. After I worked out at the park, it was kinda in the 10OG area, close to 10OG. So took my bike, rode around a little bit. I wanted to go to Abeno Haruka's tower. On the way to Abeno Haruka's tower, I rode my bike by the zoo, and this shrine is actually right next to the zoo. It's pretty unique in terms of the shrines I've seen in Japan. I've never seen any shrines that highlighted all these uh, candles. There's a lot of candles, a lot of incense, a lot of smoke. And uh, it seems to me as if people here were just here honoring, you know, maybe their lost loved ones. Uh, there's a cemetery right next to this, this shrine. So I'm pretty sure this is kind of like a shrine that honors the dead. But it's a beautiful shrine. Uh, you can take a look, see 
some of the little traditions that people do when they're at the shrines in terms of the prayers that they say and you know different uh, bowing and ringing the bells and all that different types of stuff so it's a pretty cool experience to check out the shrines in japan and every single shrine and all the temples they all represent something different so definitely check out some temples and shrines this one is right next to Tenno Jizu, so pretty easy to find if you're in Osaka. Still on the way to Abeno Haruka's tower. Stumbled upon another cool little park. If it was a nicer weather, I would have probably slowed down. Took a little bit more of a walk. Enjoyed the scenery at the park, but you know, I kind of kept it pushing. If you guys are going to Abeno Haruka's tower, there's a couple different ways you can get there. Of course, if you rent a bike, you can take your bike there. Uh, they have a free bike parking lot. You can park your bike. You can take the train to Abeno Haruka's Tower. You can either get off at Tenoji Station, which is very close, or you can take the train to Abeno Haruka Station. Depending on what train line you take to get there, uh, that makes a difference in terms of what exit you're going to take. Being that I didn't go to the top floor of Abeno Haruka's tower, I decided to go hit up the observation deck, which is on the 16th floor. You get a great view of the city as well. It's not 360, but it's a pretty big view and you get a very nice view of the whole city. Observation deck. 
Let's go. That's the top of the tower right there. Once again, it's a Beno Harukas Tower. This is the observation deck. If you want to pay the 15 to get to the top, you can always just come chill out at the observation deck, which is dope too. View of the city. Really nice view of the city, actually. Still pretty up, pretty. You're still up pretty high. It's not too many skyscrapers in Osaka. So this is definitely the tallest building. I think it's about a thousand feet. Not this one, but the one I'm in. I've been on. It's like a some look like some player ass, player ass uh, high rise apartment building. They got a helicopter pad on the top. After hitting up a Beno Haruka's Tower, rode down to Osaka Castle, another super dope spot that you got to check out when you go to Osaka. There's a lot of historical relevance to Osaka Castle. They got a lot of information up there that can teach you about the history of Osaka Castle, some of the wars that was fought out there, a lot about the samurais and all that, the shoguns. Also shows you a lot of history over the different rulership in the area. Aesthetically, Osaka Castle is definitely one of the dopest things you're going to see in the Kansai area. So I highly recommend it. Super easy to get to. Uh, you can either take a bicycle over there. You can even walk over there from some places. If you take a train over there, you can get off at Osaka Business Park. You can get off at, I believe, Tanimachi Yonchome. That's uh, on the purple line. The light green line, I believe, is the one where you take Osaka Business Park exit. Uh, they also sell food at Osaka Castle. They got little events that go on there. If you go in there during the winter time, they have light shows. If you go there during the summertime, they have picnics. It's a big park that surrounds it. So if you go there on a holiday, people go out there, they have barbecues, they have picnics, they drink, they kick it, play music. It's a great place to go visit when you're in Osaka. I highly recommend it. I also have some festivals there every once in a while.